Hey, it's Rob, and welcome to Axel's Garage. I figured I'd update you on our 2003 Yukon Denali and our locked up brake situation. So just a quick recap. We bought the vehicle knowing that the previous owner went and got a brake job done on the rear and we had a receipt for about $1,300. He brought it to a local shop where he lives and he got rear pads, calipers, rotors, caliper brackets, and two or three steel lines replaced and when he got the truck back it had an ABS light on and the rear brakes were locking up or it didn't have an ABS light on it the rear brakes were just locking up on him they, they weren't releasing brought it back to the mechanic the mechanic gave it back to him with now an ABS light on and the mechanic said there's nothing we could do we have no idea so the guy was frustrated he was the original owner um, a little neglected, a little crusty underneath, and he just wanted to dump it. We bought it cheap, and I guess maybe he just, like, he was mad that he was selling it cheap. So he was a little bit of an asshole um, when we tried to ask him about the history and everything like that. Um, I guess he figured, you know, you're spending a thousand bucks on a truck that's worth a few thousand more. You know, don't bother me with details. So wasn't very friendly. ABS light turned out to be just that that big maxi fuse. They, I guess the, the shop pulled the maxi fuse out to try to see if that would alleviate the problem, thinking it was an ABS problem. I put a new fuse in, no ABS light, everything there worked. It was progressively locking up. And what I mean by progressively is every time you put your foot on the brake, it would squeeze the rear brakes and would not release so each time you applied the brake it got tighter tighter and tighter and tighter until they were completely locked and if you let it sit for about 20 minutes they would eventually release enough where they weren't really locked but then as soon as you put your foot on the brake to start driving they're locking up again so we narrowed down that it wasn't the calipers it wasn't the brake hoses at the wheels it wasn't the brake hoses going above the pumpkin there's four brake hoses on the rear of these vehicles because they have some kind of active brake control nonsense None of those brake hoses. Uh, the fluid goes from the master out to the wheel very easily. They bleed fine. Clean fluid. Everything looked nice and clean. It's kind of beating our heads against the wall, not the brake hoses or anything like that. So we said, well, could it be the master or the brake booster hanging? This has got a power boost in it. So what we did was we locked the brakes up and then we disconnected the master from the power booster thinking that maybe the power booster was was still applying some some brake and completely disconnected it so that that master piston can come all the way back and make sure it was all the way back and that didn't alleviate any problem so we said well maybe it's something in the master holding the rears so got it to lock up pressed it you know five or six times locked up the rear and we disconnected the line the rear line on the master to let some brake fluid dribble out thinking that maybe that would go that didn't make a difference so I kind of I was I was reasonably comfortable saying that the master and the booster were okay. I was very comfortable saying all the brake hoses and everything on the S end down here was okay. Um, so what that what does that leave in between a proportioning valve and your ABS pump and module? So I was kind of leaning towards the ABS pump. The research I could do online. Nobody really seemed to, to mirror the problem that we were having of any articles that I could read. So I reached out to a local mechanic that I use for stuff, and he, um, he doesn't work on new stuff like this. He's sort of an older speed shop kind of guy. And he, I, I was looking for a mechanic, and my old mechanic that I used to use retired. And I was looking for a mechanic that wouldn't just throw parts on it, because shit, I could throw parts at it. I just was trying to diagnose it, because now, we're, you know, ABS possibly, that gets pricey. So he recommended somebody. We took it to them, told them exactly what I did, and a month later, he still hadn't even looked at it. It sat at his shop for a month. So I pulled it out of that shop, got another recommendation from the same guy, and that guy started working on it immediately. A couple days in, he said, it's your ABS pump and module. And his recommendation was, don't get a used pump. But a pump pumps go with age and contaminants and stuff like that he said that he has not had success with used pumps he said go to a new pump and we can go to used module didn't even think I might not need the module so he uh, takes my pump and module out separates it my module he called me in 
and I took a look at it, and my module was completely corroded inside. I mean, and this thing is very crusty underneath. I don't know what the story is with that. Very, very, very crusty underneath. A lot of scaly rust. Module was completely um, covered in, 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 in corrosion. So his recommendation was we'll get the used module with the new pump, and we'll be good to go. Went ahead. It's getting pricey now. We're talking $1,500 range to get the repair all said and done. That pump from GM is $750 by itself. Uh, mo junkyard module, I think, cost a couple hundred bucks plus the labor uh, for him to do everything. We were into him for like $1,500. was not thrilled with that kind of price, but being that we only spent about 1000 on the truck, I was like, okay, um, we got a decent truck for a decent price. If we can get it Calls me up, says it's done. Um, I couldn't pick it up when he was open, so I stopped by, I paid him, and told him to leave the keys in it, and I'll pick it up after hours. So I picked it up after hours, and I got in it, backed out of his, shop, uh, his driveway where his shop is, and everything felt fine. So I drove around the block, everything felt fine. Got up on one of the secondary roads, and it felt like it was dragging a little bit. And it was only about three quarters of a mile from my house, and the closer I got to home, the more it was dragging. And then as I'm coming down my block, I just took my foot off the gas and the truck came to a complete stop. The rear brakes were still locking up the same way. And this time it seemed like they were tighter than ever. And it took everything that this six liter has to offer to overpower those rear brakes to get it back to his shop, the roughly not even three quarters of a mile, probably, probably less than three quarters of a mile. Put it in his driveway with a note on the dashboard, threw the keys in his drop box, a nasty note, and said, this is doing the same thing, even worse. So the next day, he calls me up and he says, yeah, it's the master. Now I'm a little, I don't know this guy. I've never went to this mechanic before. He came recommended that he was an honest guy who didn't just throw parts at a vehicle. And he's telling me now it's the master, which is a $100 part. So after I spent $1,500 with him, He's saying it's the master, that the ABS pump and module were bad, that's what the problem was, but the master, um, you know, by them doing what they did and, and bleeding the brakes out and, and changing all that stuff, they disrupted a lot of rust in the lines, and he said the fluid was very dirty and the inside of the master was filled with rust and contaminants, and he put a master in, didn't charge me labor, only charged me for the part at 300 for a $100 master. I don't know where he got the master from, I guess it was from... Alibaba or something but he charged me three for the master now I'm into him for like 1800 bucks and the truck finally works and then I'm looking back at the videos and we're editing the old videos and and the old videos show me bleeding the brakes out and the brake fluid is crystal clear brand new so now I'm a little perplexed at all these contaminants in there um, from the master that was dirty inside and and put all the shit in the lines and clogged up the screen. Apparently there's some kind of trash screen in the ABS pump that that clogged up and that, that caused the same exact problem to happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm doubting what he's telling me. Uh, I don't know enough, I don't have enough knowledge to go out there and call him a liar. Um, it's difficult for a customer, I guess, to, to, to say, you know, I think you might have misdiagnosed it and ripped me off. I don't know. But if it was the pump and the module that were causing the rear brakes to lock up, which I thought it was, and he put the new pump and module in, how does, you know, crap in the lines, if there is crap in the lines, cause that same exact problem? And now it's, let's just flush out the system, flush out the brake fluid, and put a new master in, and the same problem that was the pump and module is now the master, and putting the master in. Was it the master all along? Was it a hundred dollar part that I could have just went and put in this thing and been done with it? And I, I thought about it. I thought about throwing a part at it, throwing a hundred dollar master cylinder at it. And I said, I, got, I was just like, Rob, you're better than that. You know, that that's probably not it. Don't waste your time throwing stuff at it. Take it to a guy, even if he charges me, you know, for the pump and labor, I mean, for the master and labor to put it in something that I could have done, at least he diagnosed it where we know that that's what the problem was and it was a master all along. Now I don't know. I have no idea whether it was the master all along. I have no idea whether it was the pump and the module and then he put a master in. I, I, I don't know. I don't know and I'm annoyed. And, um, do you know?
Yeah, down below. Let me know what you think down below. Like I said, uh, he came highly recommended. Even the guy that recommended him to me was annoyed. He goes, it just doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sound right. And especially the guy said, oh, it was all the contaminants in there. It was all gunked up with shit. And looking at the bottom of the truck, thinking maybe I would buy that as a story that there was, you know, the brake fluid was 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 disgusting and it was all filled with rust bits from the, the master cylinder rusting from the inside out. These masters, it's not like old school masters that have a, a you know, cast reservoir. It's got a plastic reservoir. So where's all that contaminants coming from? It's not coming from the master. The master is, is, is you know, the, the metal parts of the master are sitting in fluid. I don't buy it. The brake fluid was clean. Uh, I, I got ripped off. And I don't even know how I got ripped off. Did I get ripped off with the master? Maybe it was he just had to flush everything out because when they put it all together, they, they I, I don't know. I don't know. I spent a lot of money. The truck works. I'm happy that it works. But I, I know I got ripped off and I don't know how I got ripped off. And um, all I'm going to do is, is, is play the videos the way they came out. And if you look and look back at the early videos when we were bleeding, you see how clean that fluid is. So to tell me that that clean fluid all of a sudden was, you know, gunky and, and full of deposits and contaminants, I don't buy it. I don't know. Go down below and let me know what you think. I think I got taken. Um, maybe it wasn't. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether it was a master all along. I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, how do you do undiagnose a diagnose? I don't know. I just, I don't know. My wife's got a truck to drive. It, it the, you know, it's paid for. It hurts. But, you know, you try to take it to somebody to get something done, the right thing done, because it's, it's beyond your scope of diagnosing. And I should have just threw $100 at it. In the grand scheme of things, you know, it, it would have cost me, even if I put the master on it, in hindsight, right, hindsight is twenty twenty. if I would have put the master on it and it didn't fix it, and then I went to him and he put the ABS pump on, I, I would have still been ahead. I would have been ahead because he charged me 300 for the master, even though he says, oh, I didn't charge your labor. He charged me 300 for a master that would have cost me $100, even a GM part, $100. It's a cheap master, nothing fancy. So I would have been ahead of the game. And I would have gambled and, and, and possibly gambled right, and it would have been a $100 repair. If not, it would have been a $1,600 repair. Instead, it came out to be, I could have saved 200 it would have, It's an $1,800 repair. I'm fed up with it. It works. I'm happy. My wife likes the truck. Um, it, you know, it's got some gremlins here or there that we're working on. Um, she likes it. It'll be a nice winter car for her this winter, and we'll see what happens if we uh, decide to keep it come spring. I don't know. She really likes it, though. I think she's going to want to keep it. You know, we'll see. I'm just annoyed. Let me know what you think in the box below. Let's have a talk about what it could have been, what it should have been, and what should have happened. And even what I should say to this mechanic. I, I could go back there and have a chat with him, but I'm not going to bring anything else to him. That's for sure. He's on my shit list. Um, because I just, I don't feel comfortable with the, the way the whole thing went. That's it today from Axel's Garage. Finally done with the locked up brake saga in this 2003 Yukon Denali. As always, thanks for watching.